All right. So um, yesterday I gave um, a very important update, as you know, and I, I urge you to watch it. Um, and today probably it's some sort of, uh, unfortunately, a natural continuation of that one. Yesterday we talked about several things, all the pieces of the puzzle um, are coming together. Uh, we talked about um, the Saudi decision uh, to recognize Israel, um, at least in an interview of the Crown Prince to the Atlantic magazine. We talked about uh, the Saudi um, business in the U.S. Uh, we talked about the fact that the Saudis agreed to uh, finance U.S. presence in Syria in order to protect uh, um, the people there from Iranian expansion. Uh, we talked about the fact that um, we have also um, um, the Iranians that are afraid of a uh, coming attack from the U.S. and Israel. Um, there's a leak uh, of information coming from the uh, top levels of the Iranian um, um, Revolutionary Guard uh, regarding their um, knowledge of a plan to attack them. In fact, um, as I mentioned yesterday, the Iranians uh, purchased billions of U.S. dollars cash and, and caused by doing so the devaluation of their own currency, the real, um, and um, they also are making very, very harsh statements over the last 48 hours. Uh, we know that um, Iran told Israel that if Hezbollah will be attacked, Haifa will not exist anymore. We, we hear of Iranian um, threats on Azerbaijan because they suspect that Azerbaijan is uh, going to allow the United States to take off from their air bases over there towards Iran to destroy uh, things there. It's interesting because the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. If we heard uh, a week and a half ago that F Israeli F-35s were seen in the skies of Iran gathering information over uh, regarding their nuclear sites, and if we hear about the, the two and a half, three uh, weeks ago um, military drill bet between Israel and America that assimilated a massive Iranian rocket uh, or missile attack on Israel, um, and if we add to that also uh, the um, Israeli-American um, late, latest military agreements, uh, we, we, we basically see that um, um, the level of readiness for a war is at its peak right now. But what I wanted to talk about today, and you can watch the rest of my the information I gave about the Iranian um, fear of a very imminent uh, attack, you can watch it later on. But I wanted to talk about the um, chemical attack. Well, yesterday... Uh, which was the um, anniversary, the first anniversary to the U.S. attack on the Syrian airbase. Uh, if you remember, it was April 7th that President Trump ordered uh, 59 cruise missiles to be fired from a, um, a naval vessel of the U.S., um, um, I think the U.S. 6th Fleet, um, all the way to the Khmeimim airport where the MiG, um, that dropped the um, the chemical weapon, the bombs with the chemical weapon over the Khan Shaykhun neighborhood south of Idlib. That's where he took off from. Um, I remember a year ago, I reported right here that Israel gave America not only the, the name of the pilot, but also the serial number on the tail of the aircraft that took off. We also gave the Americans... Uh, the radio communication uh, between the Syrian Air Force and uh, some uh, chemical weapon experts. They wanted to know how how successful a dropping of that particular gas is going to be. So all of those evidences uh, were given to the Americans and the Americans decided uh, not to hesitate and to strike. And on that anniversary of the 
the first Trump strike in Syria, and I remember I was in Israel, we reported from the Golan Heights, um, a year later, which is yesterday, the Syrians decided in an act of defiance, they decided to take a helicopter and drop a barrel full of chemical agent. And we're not even sure yet if it's only chlorine or if it's sarin gas with it or what. But from what we know, the problem is that the heavy bombing caused many families to to be together in closed uh, rooms. And when chemical agents get into those closed rooms um, under the door or through the windows or whatever it is, um, whole families were killed, basically. We're talking about the the official number right now is over 100, but the non-official number is over the 300, of, of which many, many are children and women. Um, now, how do you know that the Syrian regime did that? You know that because, first of all, I will spare you from the actual intelligence that we have. And we're not going to talk about the type of helicopter, the tail number of the helicopter. We're not going to talk about that one right now. But we're going to talk about the obvious things. The obvious thing is this. The obvious thing is that the minute they do that, the Syrian army immediately seal off everything. It is not allowing any help to come in or any documentation to be done by an outer um, source. In other words, the only, the only thing we got... That verified this was basically Facebook Live reports of locals using their cell phones. Now, because it was Facebook Live and because it was live reports, you knew exactly that in a chemical attack is indeed taking place. But what the Syrian regime is saying is that this is an, a broken record. It's, and what the Iranians are saying, it's fabricated. And what the Russians are saying is that it never happened. Ladies and gentlemen, when you watch live reports of hundreds of civilians being treated with, with a white foam coming out of their mouth and being treated for a massive chemical attack, and there are countries around the world that are saying it never happened, it's fabricated, it's a broken record, let's stop it. Guys, you understand that the next thing that happened was that the Syrian regime says, well, we are ready to sit and negotiate and we, are, we have reached an agreement to um, evacuate all the rebels from that area, which is exactly what they wanted. I can't believe that there are still thousands of people that believe the Russian uh, propaganda saying that this is the rebels doing that. The, why would the rebels drop that on themselves and, yet, and they're immediately... Um, give up and say we're we're out of here. You understand that that's obviously not the case. Not beyond that, you want to know that. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I can't even imagine the level of hypocrisy. The international uh, court uh, 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 of crime in the Hague today announced that it started an initial um, investigation of the, rep of the incidents in Ga on the Gaza Strip. Now, let me tell you, last week, 18 Gazans were killed, of which 12 were known terrorists that the Hamas itself published their pictures and said they are our warriors with weapons. And the international court is investigating that, whereas... We have a genocide done across our border with barrels of sarin and chlorine dropped on civilian, popul civilian population and nobody's doing anything. The level of, of hypocrisy, the level of ridiculous mindset is mind-blowing. I, I, I cannot even imagine that. Now, I want you to also understand that... Um, for Assad, he has nothing to lose, really. He understands that unless he get rid of the rebels that are right, but probably three miles away from his palace, unless he decides to get rid of them, he will never be able to hold on to the last 45% of his country. 
And so what he's doing is, is he's saying to himself, Trump wants to be out of here. Uh, the Russians don't, you know, they don't agree with the Iranians. The Iranians don't agree with the Russians. The Turks don't agree with me. I don't agree with them. Um, the, the ISIS is still here. Um, um, I need to get access to my oil and to my... I need to get rid of all those rebels. And, and in fact, I know that they're not touching... They're not touching the North Koreans. They're not touching the Iranians. They'll never touch me. That's what he thinks. That's what he thinks. And um, I think that after what happened in Khan el Shaykhun on April 4th last year with, with less casualties, um, I think that Trump, um, he already starts preparing the ground for something bigger because he, he just said that a uh, big price is to, to be paid for this thing he he basically blames russia and iran as responsible for animal assad now this is very interesting president trump is unmasking everybody there and he's basically saying guys assad is an animal but if it wasn't for russia and iran he would have not done that they always cover up for him. They always tell the world it never happened. They always protect him in the UN. They always protect him all over the diplomatic arena. He is guarded and immune. And the, we cannot really hold him as responsible only because he has some, he has some patrons over there right now. And what Trump basically says is, I've got the legitimacy the international legitimacy to not only harm Assad, but also harm Iran and Russia, basically. Add that to the already open account that President Trump has for Iran. Add that to the fact that in just a few weeks, he's going to pull out of the Iran deal. And add that to the fact that he says, according to what he believes, that every conflict in the Middle East has somehow Iranian fingerprints in it. And they're the problem in the Middle East. They are the problem in the Middle East that everybody suffer from. They they stir the pot in, 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 in Yemen. They stir the pot in, in Iraq. In They stir the pot in Syria and, of course, in Lebanon. So he believes that, uh, and even, of course, in Saudi Arabia, he believes that that is the biggest problem right now. Ladies and gentlemen, so two things are now on the table. Two things. One, a... An immediate response to the uh, chemical attack has to be uh, um, taken. And uh, the lights in the corridors of uh, the West Wing, as well as the Pentagon, were on all night. Um, they are trying to see what is the best way to hurt Assad, hurt Russia, and hurt Iranian um interest in in uh, in Syria right now but uh, I think that one of the reasons they're they're hesitating is of course they don't want to hurt more civilians in in the course of the action uh, but another thing that I want you to know is that um, Iran is bracing towards a massive strike right now and uh, Iran understands that America is uh, having a different sheriff in town right now and Iran understands that uh, Israel never, ever had more freedom than it has today to do what it needs to do and what it wants to do in order to protect itself. In other words, America will not stop, Iran, uh, um, America will not stop Israel if Israel wants to do something to Iran right now. So I, the Iranians understand that they, uh, they must abandon themselves uh, the, the uh, plan of freezing the nuclear plan. As I mentioned yesterday on my uh, report, the Israeli head of the Mossad was quoted that um, Iran is racing towards nuclear weapon. In other words, they not only that the agreement and the deal was bad, but actually they don't even keep the agreement. And they are right now, they are under the mindset that um, if they don't do that, that's their only advantage in the Middle East right now. Um, Iran is hesitating whether to turn to Russia right now and ask for some sort of an agreement with them to protect them in case of a war with America and Israel. They understand that they will have to pay with uh, 
Russian bases in Iran and, and access Russian access to the Persian Gulf, and I'm not sure they're willing to pay that price. And so we're we're watching very very interesting developments in the Middle East right now. Syria is just a playground. It is Russia and Iran that are stirring the pot. Iran is stirring the pot, and Russia is covering up for them. And all of them are frustrated that America's presence is there and is stopping the Iranian expansion and is stopping the Russian taking over of the oil and the gas um, of, of Syria that is controlled by the um, Kurds and the American controlled forces over there. America is in the process of building 20 military bases right now. 20, not one, not two, 20. 2,000 American soldiers are on the ground in Syria right now, and President Trump was uh, convinced by the uh, National Security Advisor, by Israel and by the Saudis, that uh, evacuating them right now would be a, a big mistake. Uh, not only that will destabilize the whole area, but will actually hurt even America in the long run. So um, I think um, we're watching some interesting things. Again, President Trump just said that Russia and Iran are responsible for animal Assad, and they will pay a big price. I believe him. So far, every time he said so, such things, he already he also um, made sure to um, to act upon it. So um, we, may, we we don't know the, the the minute or the second, but a, an American strike is imminent. And the question that the Iranians are asking themselves right now is: Is that going to be a strike? on our interest in Syria, or is he going to make us pay the price by attacking us in Iran? That's the big question. That's the big riddle. And that's what President Trump will also have to figure out himself. Do I want to go out to that um, deal with Iran now with that um, moral um, uh, um, the, the moral um, justification for it or am I going to leave it for later one thing is for sure the Syrian regime has to pay for it I couldn't watch all the videos I mean I've seen a lot of bad things I've seen beheading of people I've seen you know I, I've seen you know people burned alive by ice I've seen a lot of horrible things but but when you see children exposed to chemical weapon and to chemical agents and when you see the shock on their faces when you see and, and I have a four-year-old I know what it is uh, you know when a child you know is is so innocent in when you see that the majority of, of, of the victims are children and women and innocent people uh, you know that somebody has to pay the price for that not to happen again. Unfortunately, when someone sees that nothing happens, he will do it again and again and again. And he is doing that over and over again and again to his own people. He's laughing at the world. He is because he's got Russia to tell the world that it never happened and Iran to tell the world that it's fabricated. And he's saying it's just a broken record. The rebels cannot... Uh, cannot uh, live with the fact that they're losing. That's what he basically says. Well, um, over 2,000 people just from that part of East Ruta, and this part uh, today was the city of Duma, uh, over 2,000 people died there. Can you imagine 2,000 people from one area, of one suburb of Damascus? It's, it's un unbelievable. And, 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 and the International Court of Crimes, ICC, is busy investigating the events on the Gaza border where 18 Palestinians died, of which 12 were terrorists. And I don't understand that. I don't understand how the world is so blind, 
how the world is so um, given to the lie. But when you, when you understand that the, the prince of the air is Satan, and he's using the media, that's why I call the media the Medianites, um, then, then you understand the people are all brainwashed. Even the left in Israel, even the liberals in Israel are completely brainwashed. But the good thing is, Israel is led by a much better uh, person. Um, and, and the majority of the Israelis are very much sober and understand uh, the uh, twisted liberal agenda that will always justify the evildoer and always try to figure out what is wrong with us that it caused the evildoer to do the evil. That's it. It is twisted. It's, it's baloney. And they just try to feed us with all of that. But we're not buying that one. We're, sure, we're certainly not buying that one. Well, anyway, I just wanted to give you an update on, on that. Again, watch my update from yesterday. It's already on YouTube. Um, yesterday I gave a, a, a quite a detailed update on on the Iranian fear from a strike on the Saudis and Russians uh, and the Syrians and of course the Turks. You really want to watch it. Um, and that's it. Uh, God bless you. Uh, this is Sunday. It is uh, Rome, Italy right here. And uh, tomorrow we're going to start filming. Thank you for praying for us. Unfortunately, tomorrow is going to rain a little bit, but we're going to try and wait until the afternoon to do the filming. I'm going to give two messages tomorrow in Rome. One is, in Rome, in, uh, when in Rome, to the Jew first. I will tackle the issue of, of why is it that it was said to the Jew first, and, and what, why is it that in the epistle to the Romans, Paul writes so many things about Israel and the Jewish people and the law of Moses. So we try to understand that. And then, of course, the day after tomorrow, we're going to go to the region of the Vatican and I will give a message. It is not about religion, brother. And we can try and understand what is it that God wants us to do and is religion the answer or the problem. From there, we'll continue to Athens Corinth and conclude in Thessaloniki. Thank you. God bless you. And shalom from Rome. Bye-bye.